Harine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Let's begin by chanting the invocation and the first mantra. Who would like to lead us? Let me invite someone then. What about Prima Maya Gopesha Prabhu? Please lead us. Chant the invocation. Hare Krishna Mother. Uh, Hare Krishna. Invocation. You should have memorized it by now. You shouldn't need the book. We do it line by line, Prabhu, one line at a time. We want to respond. Translation The personality of God is perfect and complete. He is completely perfect. All emanations from Him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as complete wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is complete in itself. Because He is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from Him, He remains complete balance. Okay, very good. Okay, now we'll have Surapadne Ramachandra Prabhu. Chant Mantra 1. Okay, let's have Dina Pavna Murari. Maharaj, he has not uh, joined Maharaj. Okay. Surapati he is standing Maharaj. Pranam 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 Translation I 
concentrate properly. Everything animates, animates that is wished within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself which are set aside as his quota. And one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, Mr. Arunaksha Gai, is it Gora? Arunaksha Gora. Yes, please read Mantra 14, Sanskrit. Sambhutim cha vinasyam cha Yastad vedo bhyam sa Vinasenam rijam tirva Sambhutyam Ritamashnate. Now read the translation. Translation. One should know perfectly the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and his transcendental name, form, qualities and pastimes, as well as the temporary material creation with its temporary demigods, men and animals. When one knows these, he surpasses death and the empirical cosmic manifestation within it, with it, and in the eternal kingdom of God, he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge. Thank you. So, text 9, 10 and 11, we're describing the relationship in terms of knowledge. We heard about cultivating vidya and avidya. Now, 12, 13 and 14 are describing about worship different kinds of worship, worship of the Absolute and worship of the Relative. Right? So we're hearing about the Sambhutim and the Vinasham. Sambhutim, the Absolute, and the Vinasham, the temporary material world. We have to know about both. Just like we heard in mantra number 11, that we have to cultivate knowledge and nations side by side. So here also, the point is made, we have to know, we have to know about the Lord and His name and form, and we also have to know about the material creation with the demigods. We have to know about these things. Okay, go ahead Prabhu, read the purport. By its so-called advancement of knowledge, human civilization has created many material things, including spaceships and atomic energy. Yet it has failed to create a situation in which people need not die, take birth again, become old or suffer from disease. Whenever an intelligent man raises the question of these miseries before a so-called scientist, the scientist very cleverly replies that material science is progressing and that ultimately it will be possible to render man deathless, ageless and diseaseless. Such answer proves the scientist's gross ignorance of material nature. In material nature, everyone is under the stringent laws of matter and must pass through the six stages of existence, birth, uh, growth, maintenance, production of byproducts, deterioration and finally death. No one in contact with material nature can be beyond these six laws of transformation. Therefore, no one, whether demigod, man, animal or plant can survive forever in, this, in the material world. Hare Krishna. Okay. So very, very clear. Everything subject to these six sta stages, the demigods and even the plants. All of us, you know, we're all somewhere towards the end. D 
deteriorating. I don't know about you, but I'm at this deteriorating stage. <laughs> I'm finished with birth and growth and maintenance. I'm not going to have any byproducts, but deterioration goes on very quick. The body deteriorates. Okay, we'll have somebody else read. Matajis can read. Let's have Bindia Mataji read. Is Mataji there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Sanavat Pranam. The duration of life varies according to species. Lord Brahma, the chief living being within this material universe, lives for millions and millions of years, while a minute germ lives for some hours only. But no one in the material world can survive eternally. Things are born or created under certain conditions. They stay for some time, and if they continue to live, they grow, procreate, gradually dwindle, and finally vanish. According to these laws, even the Brahmas of which there are millions in different universes are all liable to death either by today or tomorrow. Therefore, the entire material universe is called Martya Loka, the place of death. So it says Brahma lives for millions of years. I thought Brahma only lived for a hundred years. Can you explain? Oh, really? Yeah. What do you like, mean? Uh, some are uh, like um, the Brahma for uh, the Brahma uh, for our uh, man mantra has four heads, but there are hundred headed Brahma, ten headed Brahma. So does that mean they live longer? Maybe Maharaj, I do not know. <laughs> you don't know, right? Yeah. It says, there are many millions of Brahmas, even the Brahmas of which there are millions. Does that mean, do they have a planet of Brahmas? Is there a planet with Brahmas, all Brahmas living there? Brahma Loka. Is, is that, is Brahma Loka, is that where there's millions of Brahmas living? So who's living there? Hmm? Of course, you're a new devotee. You wouldn't really maybe be sure of this because you're, you're not initiated yet. So I understand you're quite new, right? Someone can help her. What about Subang Subanga Harini Mataji? Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Subanga Harini. Subramai Harini Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, it's, uh, each Brahma one day is like 84,000 years of hour. So that's why 100 years of Brahma means it is million. 84, 81, I mean, that million years will come. 311 yes, yes. yes. So 365 into 84,000 into 100. Where'd you get 84,000 from? That is uh, 42,000. Brahma's day is 42,000 years of hour. Really? One day. Brahma's, Brahma's day is 42. I don't know where he got this from. Hare Krishna Maharaj, our, our Brahma's uh, lifetime 311.04 trillion uh, uh, hour years. How, how did they calculate that? Where did that number come from? Anyway, an answer my first questions. Are there, is there a planet with millions of Brahmas on it? 
In Brahma Loka, are there many Brahmas there? Right. In each universe, there's one Brahma. Yeah. Yes. And Brahma Loka is where that one Brahma resides. Right? So when it yeah. says there are millions of Brahmas, what does it mean? It is millions of universes. Right. In each universe, there's a Brahma. Right. Okay. And so when they talk about Brahma living for millions and millions of years, what does it, does it mean different Brahmas live longer than other Brahmas? Huh? How long does Brahma live? In terms of... Brahma is one year of us is 24 hours of Brahma. That no, I'm not, I'm not interested in our time. In terms of Brahma's time, how long does he live? 100 years. 100 years, right. He lives for 100 years. In, with, with all the different universes, although there's some Brahmas with many heads and some Brahma with just, in our universe Brahma has only four heads, but they live the same. They all live for 100 years of their time. And their time is the same. One breath of Vishnu, right? One breath of Vishnu, and then they, Vishnu inhales and all the universes are brought insight into the body of Vishnu. So each, all the Brahmas live for a hundred years. So when Prabhupada writes, lives for millions and millions of years, that's in terms of our time. Yeah. Brahma's time is a hundred years. So Brahma's year, you said three, 12 months and 30 days each month. So 360 days in a year. And then uh, what, one day has how many Divya Yugas? One day of Brahma? One day of Brahma is made up of? 1,000 Chatur Yugas, right. Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Maharyam Brahmano Vidu. 1,000 Yugas, 1,000 cycles of the four Yugas. So if you add up the duration of the Satya Yuga, and the Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, Kali Yuga, then it comes up to 4,320 million or something. Like that. So anyway, you add them up and you get the duration of one day of Brahma. There's 1,000 times that. And that's one day, and then one night is the same duration as the day. So this is the lifetime of Brahma. So Brahma has a very long life, millions and millions of our years. But the tiny germ only lives for a few hours. So what happens with the germ? What does the germ experience? Does the germ also, in, in the course of a few hours, what happens to the germ? Same six, six, uh, six stages. Yeah, they also experience. They, they take birth, they grow, they maintain, they by, produce byproducts, then they dwindle and they die. Yeah, you, you can see they take birth in the night, but just in the, in, when the sky becomes dark, there's some insects just taking birth. In the morning, they're all dead. Right? They've had a full life, one night. But they've been through all the phases of life. So it's different for different living entities. We think a hundred years, we think, oh, long life. But our life is very short compared to the life of the demigods and to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma, one day of Brahma is so many millions of years. So everything is very relative in this world. But everywhere there is death in the material world. So Marjya Loka, place of death. Go ahead, somebody else, let's see who's not read. We can have, uh, Sri Rupa Mataji.
Hare Krishna. Please read for us. Material scientists and politicians are trying to make this place deathless because they have no information of the deathless spiritual nature. This is due to their ignorance of the Vedic literature, which contains full knowledge confirmed by matured transcendental experience. Unfortunately, modern men in averse to receiving knowledge from the Vedas, Puranas and other scriptures. From the Vishnu Purana, we receive the following information. Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta, Shetra Knyakya Tata Para, Avidya Karma Sanyanya, Trutiya Shakti Ishyati. Lord Vishnu, the personality of Godhead, possesses different energies known as Para Superior and Apara Inferior. The living entities belong to the superior energy. The material energy in which we are presently entangled is the inferior energy. The material creation is made possible by this energy, which covers the living entities with ignorance, avidya, and induces them to perform fruitive activities. Yet there is another part of the Lord's superior energy that is different from both this material, inferior energy and the living entities. That superior energy constitutes the eternal deathless abode of the Lord. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.20. Paras tasma tu bhavanyo abhyakto abhyakta sanatanaha yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nashyat suna vinashyati. Okay, very very good, Manaji. Okay, let me ask you some questions. Do you do you know what? Why is the living entity the superior energy over the material energy? Uh, because the material energy is a dull matter, and the, uh, the living entities have consciousness. They are part and parcel of the Lord. Right, but why is it that we become? Uh, it mentions here that the living entities. Uh, we, we become entangled in the material energy, the inferior energy. It's inferior, but we become entangled in it. Yes, Maharaj, we get entangled by the three modes of material nature, mode of goodness, uh, passion and ignorance. But we're supposed to be superior. So what's the cause of our entanglement? Just thinking that we are the body, is it? Yes, because of ignorance, right? Because of avidya. By our ignorance, we become entangled. The material and our ignorance is that we want to exploit the material energy. We want to enjoy it independently of Krishna. Yes. Right? We're told there's a superior energy over both the para and the apara prakriti. There's a superior energy. What is that? The Lord's energy. Yes, the, the Supreme Lord. He's the, the superior energy. Right? He's above all that. So the, the para and apara prakriti, they're his energies. But we're thinking, because we're superior to dull matter, we're thinking the dull matter is for us. It's for our enjoyment. We're not recognizing who it actually belongs to. It's actually all the Lord's property. Right? We heard in the beginning. Okay, thank you. And then Prabhupada quotes this verse from 8th chapter describing about the spiritual world. There are only two verses in Bhagavad Gita mentioning about the spiritual world. This is one. The other one is in 15th chapter. All right, we'll go ahead. Let's have another Prabhu read. Is Mr. Anand Singha there, please? Or is it, uh, is it Arund? 
No, it's Anand. Anand. Yeah? Is he there? You can read, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. All the material planets? All the material planets, upper, lower, or intermediate, including the sun, moon, and Venus, are scattered throughout the universe. These planets exist only during the lifetime of Brahma. Some lower planets, however, are vanquished after the end of one day of Brahma and are again created during the next day of Brahma. On the upper planets, time is calculated differently. One of four years is equal to only 24 hours. One, uh, one of uh, our years is equal to only 24 hours or one day and night on many of the upper planets. The four ages of Earth, uh, Satya, Zeta, Dwapar and Gali last only 12,000 years according to the time scale of the upper planet. Such a length of time multiplied by 1,000 constitutes one day of Brahma and one night of Brahma is the same. Such days and nights accumulate months and years, and Brahma lives for 100 such years. At the end of Brahma's life, the complete universal manifestation is vanquished. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. So, Prabhupada is describing to us about the lifetime of Brahma. We went, we already covered that, right? Brahma lives one, 100 years, and and in one day of Brahma, there's a thousand cycles of the four ages. The four ages last only 12,000 years, according to the time scale of the upper planets. But on our planet, it's millions of years. But on the, on the planets of the demigods, it's only 12,000 years. So time is different, different places. For different living entities, time is different. Okay, we'll go, we'll go ahead. Uh, let's have Ras, Rasa Purna, Purna Mataji read. Is it? Hare yes, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Those living beings who reside on higher planets like the sun and the moon, as well as those on Mercaloka, this earth planet, and also those who live on lower planets, all are merged into the waters of devastation during the night of Brahma. During this time, no living beings or species remain manifest. Although spiritually, they continue to exist. This unmanifested state is called Avyakta. Again, when the entire universe is vanquished at the end of Brahma's lifetime, there is another avyakta state. But beyond these two unmanifested state, states is another unmanifested state, the spiritual atmosphere or nature. There are a great number of spiritual planets in this atmosphere, and these planets exist eternally. Even when all the planets within this material universe are vanquished at the end of Brahma's life, there are many material universes, each under the jurisdiction of a Brahma, and this cosmic manif manifestation within the jurisdiction of the various Brahmas is but a display of one-fourth of the energy of the Lord, Ekapa Vibhuti. This is the inferior energy. Beyond the jurisdiction of Brahma is the spiritual nature, which is called Tripad Vibhuti, three-fourths of the Lord's energy. This is the superior energy or Paraprakriti. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. So we're told about different devastations and different times where there's, uh, where the creation is manifest and where it's not manifest, right? There are two stages of unmanifest, where, where, where it becomes unmanifest. Do you, did, did you remember? 
the unmanifest, when does it happen? Uh, when Brahma's life is ended, uh, comes into end. Yes. And, and uh, everything is uh, uh, vanquished, like uh, destroyed. Right. At the end of Lord Brahma's life, there's one, one devastation there. Everything is un becomes unmanifest. And there's another one. Day of Brahma also right, at the end of Brahma's day, right? When there's night, the night of Brahma, then there's, it's a partial annihilation. The lower planets, the upper planets, they still remain, very high planets, above Brahma, above the heavenly planets, they remain. But the, the earthly planets and the lower planets, they're all, they're all vanquished. They're all taken away, become avyakta. <laughs> then there's another unmanifest stage. Then you have again, but then you have again creation. With the morning, with the end of Brahma's night, comes again the morning, and then again there's creation. So, what about the spiritual planets? When do they have devastation and annihilation. No, it's not Maharaj in spiritual world. What happens there? Uh, that remains as it is. Okay. It remains as it is. Yeah, but like spiritual world is not being changed Maharaj. No annihilation at all. No, is there any day and night? There is Maharaj. Day and night is there. But there is no annihilation. No annihilation. Eh? They must get very bored after some time, don't they? No Maharaj, they are serving the Lord, so they are not bored. In the spiritual world. They don't want to change? They're happy? Yes, they are happy. Okay. So, there are many, there are many planets there in the spiritual sky. No, Maharaj, only Vishnu Loka, Brahma, Akna, uh, spiritual world. Only the spiritual world. Yeah. And in the spiritual world, how many planets are there? Only one planet, Vishnu Loka. Mm -hmm. I am confused. Oh no, there are many, many planets. Be because Vishnu has many different forms, right? There are many different forms, different expansions of Vishnu. Yes, Maharaj. And we're told also that the spiritual sky is three times the material world, yes, three right? Three fourths of the material. Yes. Right, three fourths. So, if in, if in the material world we have so many planets, many, many planets, you know, infinite number of planets, universes, coming out from the body of Mahavishnu. So in the spirit, spiritual sky, in Vaikuntha, must also be many, many planets. There are many different planets there, different forms of the Lord, different incarnations. They all have their own planets. Because each of the Lord's forms are eternal. So they're all there in the spiritual world. And different devotees, they go there. You know, somebody's, someone's, a, there's a planet for Lord Kapila. There's a planet for uh, Lord Desparta Sarati. There's a planet, you know, all, there's the planet for Lord Varaha, planet for Lord Nasring, all the diff different forms of the Lord, they have their places where they reside. So that's the nature of the Vaikuntha. But Goloka, that's one planet. When we go to Goloka, beyond that, beyond Vaikuntha, it's Goloka. We're not touching on that here. It doesn't mention about that in, directly in the Upanishad. Yeah, you know, this Upanishad, this is just a preliminary knowledge, you know, it's just like the introduction, the first step 
and self-realization. So in the beginning, in the beginning it was impersonal, we were hearing about the Lord's impersonal feature, but you'll see when we go on to the next verse, the other verses to, at the end, they're talking more about the personal feature, how the Lord is a person. But in the beginning it was all impersonal, more impersonal. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone, let's have somebody read. We can have Mr. Uh, Sushanta Samai, Samal Prabhu. Is he present? Yes, Maharaj, he's present, Maharaj. Please read for Sushant us. Prabhu. Sushant. Sushant Prabhu, unmute yourself and Sushant Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay, it's not going to. What about? What about Shiva Subramanya? Prabhu, she, Mr. Shiva Subramanya. Would you like to read? Is he present? Yes, Maharaj, he is present. Shiva Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj, yes. Please read first. Read operating supreme person residing within the spiritual nature is Lord Sri Krishna. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.22, he, he can be approved. Can be approached only by unalloyed devotional service, not by the process of jnana, that is a philosophy, or yoga, mysticism, or karma, fruity work. The karmis or fruity workers can elevate themselves to the Shurgaloha planets, which include the sun and moon. Jnanis and yogis can attain still higher planets, such as Maharoha, Kapoloha, and Pramaloha. And when they become still more qualified through devotional service, they can enter into spiritual nature. Either the illuminating cosmic atmosphere of the spiritual sky, that is Brahman, or the Vaikuntha planets, according to their qualification. It is certain, however, that no one can enter into the spiritual Vaikuntha planets without being trained in the devotional service. Okay, thank you. So Prabhupada is describing to us about the, the the different planets in the universe, right? Maybe you can explain to us, Prabhu, the structure or the arrangement in the universe, this material universe. Yes, Maharaj. So, the summary is that only those devotees who are doing fever devotional service will be able to go to Vaikuntha planet. The all others, the Gyanis and Karmis, they will be in the lower level. For example, Karmis will be in the Swarkaloha planet. And the Gyanis and Yogis uh, will be in uh, Tapoloka or Pramaloka. Then, uh, after gaining, uh, attaining some uh, realization, they will be able to go to Vaikuntha planet uh, by performing fewer devotees. Yeah, they have to become devotees, right? What about the spiritual sky, the Brahman? Who goes there? That is an intermediate state before Vaikuntha, the Brahman state is there. When they become more qualified to do devotional service, those people, those jnanis and yogis, when they start doing devotional service, they get free to Brahman, Brahman, the spiritual sky. Enter into the Brahman. Brahman. That what's going to happen there? Are they going to do devotional service there? If they do the service, they will go to Vaikuntha Brahman. If, if they don't do devotional service, they can go to Brahman. Yeah, when when they remain at the see these jnanis and yogis, the jnanis and yogis when they do devotional service 
and from Brahma Loka and Tapo Loka, they attain a state of Brahman. Then, uh, continuing to do the devotional service, they will go to uh, Vaikuntha. Yeah, but... It's a they have to qualify themselves. Mm -hmm. But we hear also Lord Krishna killed the demons. Where do they go? When Krishna kills the demons. Demons, when he kills the demons, they get the liberation and they go to Goloka. Goloka. Really? No, no, no. Not all the demons go to Goloka. Usually the demons, when they're killed by Krishna, they go to Brahman. Right? Krishna kills the demons. The demons, they can't go to Goloka. Sai, Sai Jam. Huh? Sai Jam. In Brahman. Brahman. Yeah, they go to Brahman. They go into the Brahman, they stay there for some time. Then probably they'll come back to the material world. Because Brahman is only theoretical liberation. So the demons killed by Krishna, they get that impersonal liberation. That is into the Brahman, that's Sayuja Mukti. That's the impersonal liberation. So some of the jnanis, as you said, as you correctly said, the jnanis, yogis, they, go, they, they may go to the Brahman also. Because they desire what is their desire? The jnanis, the yogis, when they go to Brahman, what are they desiring? They desire to get the best with the uh, uh, law. That is their, uh, if, if they, generally the jnanis are striving for. What, what are, I'm sorry, what are they desiring? No, the, 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 when somebody is uh, aspiring to get into a Brahman state, uh, Brahman liberation, their ultimate goal is to, uh, at their level, their uh, ultimate goal is to get to merge with the Lord. That is not possible, that is a, a wrong aspiration. So if they do devotional service, they will go to Vaikundha. But if they don't do devotional service, they go to yeah. Brahman. Yeah. But what? Usually, when they go to Brahman, they want to become one. They want to merge. Yeah. They want that oneness, becoming one. Remember, we spoke about the oneness? Ekatvam Anupashyata. Right? The jnanis, they, they want to become one. They think they can become one. They think they can give up their identity and become one, simply become the one. One, they think all, we're all one. We're all Brahman. They're thinking like that. And they think Krishna's Brahman and Vishnu's Brahman. And they think that Brahman is the supreme. Right? But what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? Krishna says, Brahmanohi pratistaham amritashyavayasya. Krishna says, I am the basis of the Brahman. But they're thinking, Brahman is the basis of Krishna. <laughs> they think Brahman, they think when Krishna comes, he's come from the Brahman. They don't understand Krishna's position. So this is the problem with the jnanis and the yogis. They think Brahman is the supreme, so they go to the Brahman. They enter the Brahman, they become one. They stay there in the Brahman. And what goes on there? What do they do there? Yeah, they don't do anything. There's no, there's no variety, no... There's no individuality, no engagement, no relationship, just only oneness. So that's why they don't stay there very long. They get fed up. <laughs> they get fed up. But when you go to Vaikuntha planets, what's going on there? Yeah, there's a relationship with the Lord. Yes. Right, there's a lot of activities going on there. Yeah, there's a lot of, and everybody's 
busy, everybody's active, they're all engaged doing service. But in the Brahman, nothing, just oneness, that oneness. So that, that Brahman, that's the abode of liberation. But it's, it's not the spiritual world. You're not in the spirit, you're in the spiritual sky, but you're not in the spiritual world. Vaikuntha planets, that's the spiritual world. But the Brahman, that's just the, the abode of liberation. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, let's have um, some manager. I wonder about Shobha Lalita Bhai Mataji. Is she, has, is she present? Manager. Yes, you can read manager. Yes. Yes. On the material planets. On, on the material planets, everyone from Brahma down to the Andes trying to lord it over material nature and this is the material disease. As long as this material disease continues, the living entity has to undergo the process of bodily change. Whether she takes the form of a man, demigod or animal, she ultimately has to endure an unmanifested condition during the two devastations. The devastation during the night of Brahma and the devastation at the end of Brahma's life. If we, if we want to put an end to this process of repeated birth and death, as well as the uh, con concomitant factors of old age and disease, we must try to enter the spiritual planet, where we can live eternally in the association of Lord Krishna or his plenary expansion. His Narayana expansion, his Narayana form. Lord Krishna or his plenary expansion dominate every one of these innumerable planets as fact confirmed in the Shruti Mantras, Eko Vasi, Eko Vasi Sarvaga, Krishna Ideha Eko Pi, San Bhutudayo Vapati, Vapala Prabha Supanisha Tumko and Jiva. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Maharaji. So, more information about the nature of these material planets and the spiritual sky also. Material world, we're all trying to be lorded over, we're trying to exploit, trying to enjoy the material nature. Described in the Bhagavad Gita like that. Because we're trying to lord over the material nature, it gives us a lot of problems. And all of us, we're all guilty. We're all in the same boat. Lord, from Lord Brahma down to the ant, the tiny ant. We're all of the same nature. We're here in this material world. And we have this material disease. What is that disease? We're th we want to enjoy the material nature, we want to control, but we're not, we're meant to be the servant. So we have to get rid of this disease. So Prabhupada describes about the, the devastations and how we have to get out of this world to get free of old age and disease, we have to enter into the spiritual planets. We don't just want to enter into the Brahman, right? We go into the Brahman, there's no devotional service there. There's no activity there. Of course, there's no old age, there's no disease there, but still, there's no devotional service. There's just the oneness. It's all one. You're all one. You've, you know, it's very, very, uh, what could we say, impersonal. This is where the impersonalists go. 
they like that impersonal mood. So they go into the Brahman and do nothing, be nothing, do nothing, or just be one. To do nothing and to do and to be one, practically the same thing. You see, Lord Buddha, he was defeated. Lord Buddha was preaching, it's all void, everything is zero. And Shankaracharya changed it, no, it's all one. It's all one, Brahman. So he changed from Buddhism to Mayavadi, to the impersonal, that it's all one. So just a little change. So we can live in the association of Krishna, not only Krishna, but all of his different forms. And we hear uh, Lord Krishna or his expansions dominate every one of these innumerable planets. So many planets are there. So you can understand there's a lot of people there. There's a lot of living entities in the spiritual world. We are the minority. We're here in the material world. But the vast majority of people are in the spiritual world. We're just the minority. We're like the prisoners. Just like in, in the country, you have a jail, so there's a few people in the prison, but most people are free. Most of the citizens are free. So the same way, most citizens are liberated. The liber in the spiritual world, there's a lot more, many, many more living entities. But we're the criminals, we're here in the material world. Because we have this disease, this material disease. Right? Just like if you get the disease, if you get the COVID, you know, they'll put you in isolation. They're not going to let you run around. They're going to put you away. You're going to stay away from everybody. And so that we're here in the material world. We're all in quarantine here in the material world. This is our situation. So we want to get out. We want to finish this quarantine and get back to the real life. All right, we'll have somebody read. Let's have a man. Hare Krishna Prabhu, you like to read? Yeah, go ahead. No one can dominate Krishna. It is the conditioned soul who tries to dominate material nature and is instead subjected to the law of material nature and the suffering of repeated birth and death. The Lord comes here to re-establish the principles of religion and the basic principles is the development of an attitude of surrender to the Deity. This is the Lord's last statement in the Bhagavad Gita, 18 verse 26. the masses of people in diverse ways. People have been urged to open hospitals, but not to educate themselves to enter into spiritual kingdom by devotional service. They have been taught to take interest only in temporary relief work, which can never bring real happiness to the living. They start varieties of public and semi-governmental institutions to tackle the devastating power of nature. 
All right, thank, thank you Prabhu. So maybe you can tell me please, what is this devastating power of nature? The, the, Prabhupada writes, they're, they're public and semi-government institutions to tackle the devastating power of nature. What is he talking about? Would someone like to help him? Some... Yes, Maharaj. Yes, please tell me. It's a devastating in nature, means a tsunami, cyclone, earthquake, and this type of uh, natural calamity. The power of the nature that is like uh, in Hinsarat, we say the act of God. Is it uh, to balance the real world? Nature has its own law. That uh, it brings the, it brings the cyclones, tornado. So Prabhupada said they don't know how to pacify insurma insurmountable nature. So how are you going to pacify this insurmountable nature? So I'm asking you, how do you pacify insurmountable nature? Maybe you could fix your mic. Something wrong with your microphone. By surrendering, Maharaj. By surrendering to service, Maharaj. Well, I hope not. Uh, uh, we cannot dominate uh, uh, material nature. Yeah, Prabhupada writes, powerful nature can be pacified only by the awakening of God consciousness. As clearly pointed out, Bhagavad Gita 714. Do you, do you know the verse 714? Bhagavad Gita 714, do you know that verse? Devi Yesha Gunamayi Mama Maya Do you know the verse? Someone else knows? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj, please. What's it mean? Mam eva ye. Mam eva. Mam eva ye prapadyante. Maya meva durantite. Translation, do you know? Uh, yes, Maharaj. The Krishna, uh, Lord says in that verse that uh, I have uh, mate, uh, divine energy which is material uh, and uh, it is very difficult to cross over. It consists three modes of material nature. My, Divine energy consists three modes of material nature and it is very difficult to overcome or overcross it. But those who uh, come and surrender unto me, uh, they can cross that material energy very easily. I don't remember Krishna mentioning about the three modes of material nature. But he does say it's very difficult to overcome and by surrendering to me you can easily cross beyond it. Yes. Okay, this material nature. Okay, consisting of three modes of material nature. All right. So, so how are we going to pacify material nature then? What are we going to do? Just surrender to the Lord. You, you're just going to say, I surrender? How are you going to surrender? What are you going to do? So tell me, what are you going to do? 
You just talk, I'm going to love the, you know, you, you just tell your husband, I love you, I love you. You don't do any service, what do you do? I cook for food, then I uh, make some dresses, I make garlands, I do uh, bath him, uh, make him decorate. Okay, you worship the Lord, right? You can yes. worship the Lord, make a nice temple for him, put the deity there, worship him. And anything else you can do? We want to pacify the material nature. What can we do? Yeah, big Sankirtan festival, right? Sankir, big chant, chanting. Do a lot of kirtan, Harinam Sankirtan. Give the holy name to people. Let them hear the holy name. That is our greatest gift to give to the world, to give them the holy name. We give them the holy name, we give prasadam, book distribution, all of these things. This way we can pacify the material nature. The world will become a better place right? if we do all of these things. We don't hear about material nature being very difficult when Krishna is here on the planet. There were no earthquakes, there's no virus, none of these things. When the pure devotee comes, then the planet becomes very, very pious and very cooperative and yields everything. The planet can real very valuable minerals and resources and the planet can be very cruel, very hard. Depends how we deal with it. Because we don't take care of the planet, because we create so many problems. So the material nature has become very difficult to control or to, to live with. We have so many problems. So we have to do more spiritual activities, try to pacify the material nature. Nice sankirtan, nice worship of the Lord. Very important. All right, we'll go ahead. Someone like to read? Yes, Maharaj. Hello, Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. In this teaches that one must perfectly know both Sampuji, the personality of the Godhead, and Vinasa, the temporary material manifestation side by side. By knowing the material manifestation alone, one cannot be saved, for in the course of the nature there is a devastation at every moment. Ahani, ahani, bhūdāni, gacchanti daha, Yamale, not uh, can one be saved from these devastations by the opening of hospital. One can be saved only by the complete knowledge of the eternal life of bliss and awareness. The whole Vedic scheme is meant to educate men in this art of attaining eternal life. People are often misguided by the temporary attractive things based on sense gratification but service rendered to these sense objects is both misleading and degrading thank you thank you Prima. so Prabhupada quotes this uh, sloka ahani ahani bhutani gaschanti ha yamalayam uttama krishna prabhu are you there? Uttama Krishna? Not there today? He was there, Maharaj. I, he was there, Maharaj. Really? He is there, Maharaj. Is he? Uttama he Krishna? Do you, you know this verse? Ahani Yahani Bhutani Gaschantiha Yamalayam? Do you know this one? 
Uttam Prabhu Hare Krishna. Anybody know it? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, do you know this verse? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Even uh, in Pandavas, when they are in exile, this, uh, they want to drink the water. That time, this Yaksha asked the question to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Right. What does he ask? A, what, what question did he ask him? What is the... Uh, the most wonderful thing in the world. The most wonderful thing in the world. Right. And Maharaj Yudhisthira answers like this, right? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj Yudhisthira says, most wonderful <laughs> thing that everybody has to go to... Everyone has to die, have to give up the body. We all have to go to the temple of Yamaraj. But nobody's thinking like that. This is wonderful. This is the most wonderful thing. Although we see everybody else died, we're not thinking we will have to die. We're not making, we're not getting, preparing ourselves. We have to go to Yamaraj. We have to go and see him. So, so we have to get ready. We have to prepare for giving up that body. So this is the nature of the material world. Devastation every moment. We said at the end of the day of Brahma, devastation at the end of the life of Brahma, but there's also devastation at every moment. <laughs> no one can be saved from these devastations by the opening of hospitals. Right? We open hospitals, people just die there. <laughs> I, I don't see, you know, that devotees go there, I don't see anybody getting, they all die, they just go there, they die there. Prabh, Prabhupada told us, he said, don't give me to the doctors. <laughs> he said, they'll just do tests. And he blessed one devotee, one time when Prabhupada had gone to America, they, he was not well, the uh, devotees were worried, they took him to a hospital. But then devotees decided that the, the people in the hospital, the doctors, they were not, they, they didn't know what they were doing, they were just doing tests. So devotees decided, we'll take Prabhupada out of the hospital. So Prabhupada wanted to go out, he didn't want to stay in the hospital. And the devotee who took Prabhupada out, Prabhupada blessed him. He said, because you took me out of the hospital, you will not die in the hospital yourself. <laughs> and amazingly enough, that devotee, his name was Brahmananda, Brahmananda, he, he didn't die in the hospital. He died, he just collapsed. When he was in Vrindavan and he was, he was actually, they were actually going to take him to Delhi, to, to the hospital, but he just collapsed before, before he went. And he left his body like that. So Prabhupada gave him that benediction that he would not die in the hospital. <laughs> and it, and it, it, he got that blessing. So devastation at every moment. One can be saved only by complete knowledge of the eternal life of bliss and awareness. <laughs> we, we, we have to... We have to get complete knowledge about the nature of this spiritual, the, the nature of the spiritual world and the, and the material world. We have to know about both. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells us about the spiritual world. Does anyone remember what does Krishna say about the spiritual world in the Bhagavad Gita? The, well, that's the material world, right? Material world is Dukalaya, yes. What about the spiritual world? Yes, very good, right. Tell us the translation. There's no need, no need of sun or moon. Why not? 
because the effulgence from the uh, Krishna itself is uh, eliminating the whole. Uh, right. Everything is so effulgent. Everything is effulgent, naturally effulgent. So no need of sun or moon. So Prabhupada said, just think, no electricity bill. <laughs> Prabhupada saw how much, you know, so, so many countries very cold. You have to spend so much money for heating, to heat the water, to heat the house. So Prabhupada said, just think, you go to the spiritual world, no electricity bill. Very nice, good place. <laughs> so that's the spiritual world. So we, we know about these things. Uh, people are often misguided by temporary attractive things on, based on sense gratification. But service rendered to the sense objects is both misleading and degrading. Service rendered to the sense objects, right? The sense objects, who remembers what are the sense objects? When we talk about the sense objects, do you remember? You have to get used to this language, you see. Prabhupada always uses these terms. In the Bhagavad Gita you must have seen it also, this, the sense objects. We have the five senses and we have five sense objects. Do you remember? What are the sense objects? Smell. Hearing, smelling, uh, sense, and uh, taste. Okay. Okay. You got them now. Yes. Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching. So Prabhupada said, service rendered to these sense objects is both misleading and degrading. What does Prabhupada, what does he mean? Uh, it's misleading uh, because when we see the sense objects with the senses, we, like, we, we get attracted to this maya and we get attracted. Yeah, we, we're thinking we're going to enjoy, right? We're, uh, we're, thinking we're, we're thinking we're going to get pleasure. We're going to get some happiness from it, all right? Yes. And it, you may get pleasure, but very short pleasure, not for very long, temporary and degrading also, degrading that because we cannot control our mind and senses, we often do the things which we shouldn't be doing. And we see sometimes people, they eat things or they drink things, uncontrolled senses. And it causes us, we become ashamed, we become embarrassed, we're degraded. Okay. So, the Vedas is helping us to avoid this, these problems. All right. Oh, we're nearly finished. Oh, it's, so some, we'll just finish this last paragraph. Someone read? Yes? Last paragraph here? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? We must therefore save ourselves and our fellow man, man in the right way. There is no question of liking or disliking the truth. It is there. If we want to be saved from repeated birth and death, we must take to the devotion service of the Lord. There can be no compromise for this. Uh, there is uh, no compromise for this. It is a matter of necessity. All right. Thanks. Save, we want to save ourselves and our fellow man. <laughs> we have to know how to save ourselves and then we can save others. And Prabhupada said, no question of liking or disliking the truth. 
it's the truth. You just, we have to accept it, whether you like it or not. It's not, that's not the point. But you have to, we have to accept the truth. We have to, therefore we have to do this. Okay, let's go ahead. We've got more time. We'll go ahead to Mantra 15. We'll invite Mataji, some Mataji can chant, lead the Sanskrit for us. Hiranma yena patrena Satya sya pihitam mukam Satya sya pihitam Satya Dharma Yadrishtaye Satya Dharma Yadrishtaye Yit Prabhu, please Please Prabhu, please you Close your microphone Your your sound is off Madhiji, you can read translation Alright, so I was mentioning about how earlier we heard in, about the impersonal aspect of the Lord. How He was, you know, everywhere, He could walk, He could not walk, He's every, within everything, He's outside of everything. That's very impersonal. But here, it's more personal. That He has a face, your face but it's covered by the effulgence. So the prayer is to remove that effulgence. We want to see your face. All right? Something, the one girl, one girl was chanting, she was chanting, doing japa, and she said, Oh, Swamiji, when I chant, I see a bright light. Prabhupada said, keep chanting, it will go away. <laughs> so, Sometimes people think the goal is to see the light. But here the prayer is to remove that light. We want to see the person where the light's coming from. Behind the light, there's a, within the light, there's a person. Just like within the sun planet, there's a sun god. So we don't want to just be attracted by the light. Just like it, when people, I told about the train, the first train comes and you just go to the train station and you see the light and they go away. Light is not the train. In the same way, the effulgence is not the supreme. The Brahman is only the energy. We want to go through the Brahman to come to the abode of the Lord. And within the abode of the Lord, we want to find out the supreme Lord. Okay, Maharaj, please read purport. In the Bhagavad Gita 14.27, the, the Lord explains His personal race, Brahma Jyoti, the dazzling effulgence of His personal form in this way. Brahma Nohi Pratishtaham, Amrutasya Vyavasyasya Cha, Sashvatasya Cha Dharmasya, Sukasya Ikantikasya Cha. I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable and eternal and, in the, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan are the three aspects of the uh, same absolute truth. Brahman is the aspect most easily perceived by the beginner. Paramatma, the super soul, is realized by those who have further progress. And Bhagavan realization is the ultimate realization of the absolute truth. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 7.7, where Lord Krishna says that he is the ultimate concept of the absolute truth. Matta Paradaram Nanyat. Therefore, Krishna is the source of the Brahma Jyoti as well as the all pervading Paramatma. Later in the Bhagavad Gita 10.42, Krishna 
further explains. Go ahead. But what need is there, Achuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade the, and support this entire universe. Thus, by his one plenary expansion, the all pervading Paramatma, the Lord, maintains the complete material cosmic creation. He also maintains all manifestation in the spiritual world. Therefore, in this Sruti Mantra of Sri Isha Upanishad, the Lord is addressed as Ushan, the ultimate maintainer. Alright. So, Madhiji, maybe you can tell us, you know, so if we want to realize the Lord, so we have to realize Brahman first, and then Paramatma, and then Bhagavan. And then what about the Brahman and Paramatma? Uh, a Brahman, actually the Jnanis, uh, they, they, uh, they concentrate more on the Brahma Jyotir because they, the impersonists, they think the Lord has no form. And uh, the Yogis, uh, they, uh, their goal is to reach the uh, have darshan of the Paramatma seated in their heart. But don't we need to know anything about the Brahman or the Paramatma? Yes, Maharaj, we need to know. So? Because these, these three are both uh, Brahman and Paramatma, also uh, the expansions of the Lord, so uh, we should have the knowledge. So how do we get that knowledge? Uh, from the scriptures, by reading the scriptures. Yeah. Yes. We could also say, one who knows Bhagavan, if we know Bhagavan, then... We it, know Brahman. Huh? Yes. yes. Then we know the Bhagavan form, automatically we know about the Brahman and the Brahman, uh, Paramatma also. Yes. What's the example to give? Prabhupada gives the example of sun, uh, the sun rays, the sun disk and the sun planet, and the sun god himself. Okay, so, explain. So the, the, the sun rays is compared to the Brahman and uh, uh, the sun disk is Paramatma and the sun god himself and the Bhagavan. Yeah, so if you know the sun god, you have to know the sun, god, the sun planet, right? You have to know the sun rays and the sun planet. One who has a hundred dollars. He also has fifty dollars, he also has ten dollars. It's all included in the one hundred dollars. So one who knows Bhagavan, he also knows Brahman, Paramatma. But we don't have to worship the Brahman and the Paramatma. We simply worship the Bhagavan. So th this is a, a very important verse here, at the end of the 14th chapter. Krishna says, I'm, I'm the basis of the Brahman. I've seen some people worship the Brahman. The Jnanis, the Yogis, the Mayavadis, they, want, they worship the Brahman as the Supreme. They don't accept Krishna as the Supreme. And they think the Brahman is the cause of everything. And Krishna also, they will say Krishna is from the Brahman. But Krishna says <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> so this is the problem, you see, they don't accept Bhagavad Gita. You go, if you argue with people from Ramakrishna mission, you know, they're, they're Vedantists and they, they don't accept Bhagavad Gita, they will accept the uh, Mundaka Upanishad. And Mundaka Upanishad talks about the Brahman, doesn't talk about Krishna. So it's difficult dealing with these different people. 
Not everybody is going to accept Bhagavad Gita. We quote the Bhagavad Gita, but they will say, no, no, I don't accept Bhagavad Gita. They want to hear Vedas. So we have to be careful. <laughs> be better to avoid them. <laughs> anyway, we're trying to teach people the message of Krishna consciousness. It's not easy. Kali Yuga, nobody will accept defeat. <laughs> so we, we don't waste our time arguing. We just let them chant Hare Krishna and take prasada. Very powerful, these two things. The chanting of Hare Krishna and prasada. All right, let's go ahead. Can we have a Prabhuri? Some gentlemen, kind gentlemen, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna is always filled with transcendental bliss, Anandamayo Bhashya. <clears throat> when he was present at Vrindavana in India 5000 years ago, he always remained in transcendental bliss, even from the beginning of his childhood pastimes. The killing of various demons such as Aga, Bhakka, Utna and Pralamba were but pleasure excursions for him. In his village of Vrindavana, he enjoyed himself with his mother, brother and friends. And when he played the role of a naughty butter thief, all his associates enjoyed celestial bliss by his stealing. The Lord's fame as a butter thief is not reproachable. But by stealing butter, the Lord gave pleasure to his pure devotees. Everything the Lord did in Vrindavana was the pleasure of his associates there. The Lord created these pastimes to attract the dry speculators and the acrobats of the so-called Hatha Yoga system who, finish, who wish to find the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. the childhood okay, no, no, wait. Person, okay, personality of Godhead is filled with transcendental bliss. Anando Maya Bayasat. What does this mean? Uh, uh, Lord Krishna is always uh, um, like uh, always in Ananda. Yes. <coughs> He's made of bliss, right? Uh, he's made of bliss, yeah, eternal bliss. His, he has, he has a, his form is not material. He has an, a form which is, what's the form of the Lord? What's it made? Satchidananda. Satchidananda, right. So Anandamaya Bayasa, made of bliss. And so he remained in Vrindavan, like the Prabhupada talks, childhood pastime, Aga, Baka and Putana. They're, they're one family. Yes, sister, brother and sister. Right. <laughs> I don't know how Pralamba gets involved though. Uh, and Pralamba, so maybe different. Yeah, but Agapaka and Putana, they're one family, brothers and brother sisters. Yeah. And Krishna killed them and Prabhupada said, pleasure excursions. And he was in, it was all his, his pleasure. So the demons killed by Krishna, they're killed by Krishna in his Vasudev form. Yes. The Shamsundar Krishna, he doesn't kill the demons. That's Vasudev Krishna doing the killing of the demons. Then he talks about Krishna as the butter thief, stealing the butter. Why is he doing the... You know, and Prabhupada said, he, he is... Pleasure to, huh? pleasure to his pure devotee. Yeah, he said the, the Lord's fame as a butter thief is not reproachable. There's no fault in it, right? Usually if we steal something, we're, we get criticized, we're, we get punished. It's a crime. But why is it not a crime for Krishna? Everything belongs to Krishna. Yes, it's all his, right? Yes. He doesn't need to... But 
for the sake of giving some pleasure for his devotees and for his pastimes, he's stealing the butter. Yes, Why is he giving it to the monkeys? Krishna felt indebted to them, he wants to repay his debt to them, that they'd helped him so much to defeat Ravan. So he wants to reward them, give them nice prasad. <laughs> very good. Okay, thank you very much. I think we will stop here tonight. Is there any final question? Anybody? Anybody has any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, one question, uh, Maharaj. Uh, you said that uh, Vasudeva killed uh, demons, not the Syama Sundar. Maharaj, I'd like to understand a little more on this. The difference in uh, Vasudeva and the Syama Sundar. Okay. So there's the two forms of there's the two forms of Lord Krishna, the Shamsundar Krishna and Vasudev Krishna. So Shamsundar Krishna, that's the form, of, that's the two-armed form of Lord Krishna, playing the flute and giving pleasure to his devotees. The original form from Goloka. And Vasudev Krishna, Vasudev Krishna is the form of Krishna which is coming from Vishnu. It's a subordinate expansion of Krishna, the Vasudev Krishna, like the forearm form of Krishna. Like Vasudev Krishna appears as the son of Vasudev and Devaki. Vasudev Krishna comes as the son of Vasudev and Devaki. And he's worshipped by Vasudev and Devaki in the prison of Kamsa. He appeared in his forearm form. And then that child was taken over to Nanda Maharaj. There. And Shamsundar Krishna, he's born to Mother Yashoda and Krishna. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. So Shamsundar Krishna is a original supreme form and that Vasudev Krishna form enters into the Shamsundar Krishna form for the childhood Leela of Krishna. So two aspects to Krishna. Krishna in Vrindavan is perfect, uh, Krishna in Dwarka is perfect, Krishna in Mathura is more perfect, Krishna in Vrindavan is most perfect. So Krishna, the Shamsundar form of Krishna, that stays there in Vrindavan. But that Vasudev Krishna, that's the form of Krishna in Mathura, then in Dwarka. And so Vasudev Krishna is worshipped more in the mood of Aishwarya, and Shamsundar Krishna is worshipped in Madhurya. So there's a difference between Aishwarya and Madhurya. That's the difference between. Vasudev Krishna and Shamsundar Krishna. Okay? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Any? Krishna Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, 
uh, the note from Manoj uh, my apology today I had a problems in my mic so you asked me to uh, one time I could not respond I'm sorry I had a problem in my mic no. I was hearing from the beginning so please oh. forgive me okay I'm glad you were hearing that's good thank you very much it's good you turned off your mic because sometimes the mic if you leave it on it makes big disturbance no, no, I had a problem in my mic even when I was on I could not I was telling you like you asked me from Yudhishthira Maharaj that sloka I was trying to tell you but unfortunately my mic was his problem even I was telling you could not hear, no one can hear me no okay okay Sorry, uh, technical glitch okay no problem Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrindas.